Backstories and lessons from reaching our 10th year in business, part 15. By now, if you've been following this series, you can tell how scrappy we've had to be to keep this all going. So here's the last bit of encouragement to wrap it all up. From that 300 bottle start, we went our first two years with putting everything back into the business. We didn't pay ourselves anything. Then in 2014, when it came time to switch to certified organic ingredients and bottling companies, we got hit with a big reality check. Even after those first two years of savings, once we started getting new pricing, we were still shy a couple thousand dollars for industry standards. Keep in mind, this is just for one product, not including operating expenses. I was beat down by the news. I was about to call it quits. I started looking into loans, but only operating for two years, the offers weren't enough to cover multiple products and operating expenses. I knew I had nothing to fall back on after skating, so with some encouragement, I decided to grit it out and just know I'd have to remain scrappy. I still didn't have a business plan, no fancy pitch deck. I didn't even know angel investors or venture capitalists existed. So instead of going for this big, fanciful, grandiose vision I had in mind, I decided to just ask my dad to cover the couple thousand dollars we were shy and just trust that I knew I was going to be able to help people out. The societal programming of what I thought business needed to be was still strong though. So I went down the rabbit hole of business books and money mindset stuff for months. None of it really resonated with me though. I wasn't about to go try broing down with some shark show dudes. It was definitely a little depressing, but that led me down the next rabbit hole, self-help. That went on for a good amount of time. Then late 2015, I came across the first Derek Sivers episode on the Tim Ferriss podcast. His story was so relatable for me. To hear him say things like, there's so much more to business than money on such a big, influential type business podcast was such a relief. It shed that icky feeling I was trapped in from society's view on business, the whole grow bigger faster thing, especially in a time with so much direct to consumer venture capital sloshing around. It was hard on me knowing I had to abandon the idea of having a team of skateboarders and BMXers, being able to travel around, pay them, make videos, pretty much the only business model I knew coming from the skate world. Looking back now though, it was probably good because I hadn't fully grown out of the debauchery that lifestyle had brought me, so who knows how this would have ended up. Once I got Derek Sivers' book, Anything You Want, it changed everything. It was one of those perfect timing things. It got me back to focusing on what the goal of this whole thing was in the first place, helping people and knowing my story could be of some inspiration. I can't say enough about the book. It's full of conciseness. I won't get too into it, but here's an example. Watch out when anyone, including you, says he wants to do something big, but can't until he raises money. It usually means the person is more in love with the idea of being big, big, big than with actually doing something useful. And another example, maybe the most known email ever sent in e-commerce. It got me back to being creative with business again. I made this missing nutrient sign early on that I put up at a bunch of hiking trails. So I had that sort of creativity in me, but it was definitely sucked out for a while. It got me back to pretty much all the quirky stuff I covered in this whole series, as well as some other fun stuff, like our abandoned cart email and our refill reminder email. Uh, so I think that covers it. As inspiring as my mental health story is, I knew there was this whole different story I could tell for a different kind of motivation, what this whole video series is about, especially in today's world. So onward with it all. I'm happy to have made it 10 years helping people and still having that little sliver of being able to pay people affiliate commissions that support us. And who knows, maybe I'll change my mind and go seek some funding. But for now, if I do, it'll probably be to give us some breathing room from the juggling act of cash flow and inventory management. So that's it. I'm done talking to this camera for a while. It's your turn. Go get started. Be fruitful. Peace. Help us spread the word. Share this video with your friends and family and follow along for more backstories.